Hey everybody, what is going on? Hexlex here, got another Master Duel video for you. So, um, covering the event, the Dual Triangle event here. Uh, the, this is of course the event where you pick a team of either Fusion, Synchro, or Xyz. You are locked into one, and then you face the other two groups. So, um, I don't know, we just have Pearly here, really. Uh, Pearly is pretty untouched, that's why I kind of picked it as uh, the deck for the event here. Uh, none of the pearly cards themselves are hit, and the only thing that you would normally play that's not allowed is Max C, uh, which is fine by me. So, uh, and then of course the Link monsters you would play in the extra deck, of which there are honestly relatively few anyway. Uh, the only thing you're really missing here is like Link Karibo, maybe very corner key stuff like Relinquish Anima or Sky Striker Ace Azalea. Um, but otherwise, you really don't have to do too much with the uh, the pearly deck here to get it to work in the event. And I gotta say. This is honestly a pretty big gripe I have with Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel events. So, this is something that I've talked about before, it's something I've actually dedicated a whole video to. I'm kind of going to do the same thing here, except this time we will actually watch gameplay from the event. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. One thing I don't really like about Master Duel events um, is that... And this is by design, too. I'm going to talk about that here in a second. All Master Duel events within over the last year, really, have been... all right. Pick a meta deck that fits in this event, bring it, make very, very minor changes, and then just win. Um, and that's, again, that's exactly what's going on with Pearly here. It's what goes on with every single Master Duel event. Like, I don't even really feel the need to talk about this build, because we already covered Pearly this season. So it's like, there's nothing I can say that's unique about this event deck that... that isn't already also true of Pearly, right? Um, and again, this is my big gripe with the, the event, especially because this is, in fact, by design, right? Like, it's so blatantly obvious that the Master Duel events are here to, um, you know, sell you on whatever the latest pack is. Now, I think for this season, the reason they chose the Triangle Festival um, and allowed you to pick between Fusion Synchronic Seas is because so many packs have come out uh, in the last, like, month or so that there's not really one they can really promote. But uh, in the past, they've definitely, like, very blatantly promoted, like, a new deck with the event, right? Think about the No Extract event. Well, that came out, like, right after Fluiz, or Flanderese came out. So, hey, you can buy this new Flanderese deck and play it. Uh, think about the Fiend, Fiend Fairy event. Oh, hey, look, Lab just came out. <laughs> They're all fiends. They're not hit. Go play Labyrinth, right? Um, it's just so true. Like, uh, think back to Synchro Link event. That's another one we had recently. The reason we had Synchro and Link is because a lot of the decks that came out at the time, namely Infra Noble Knight, were Synchro and Link based. So, I don't know. I, I, I've said this before, but my favorite events were NR format and Limit 1. And the reason they were my favorite formats is because, uh, for events, is because they actually challenge you to deck build, uh, which I did not feel challenged even a little bit uh, in this event, and really in any recent ones. Um, but it's also, if you think about it in the same frame of context of, oh, Konami makes events to promote the pack to get you to buy it, it also makes sense why we have not seen repeats of NR or Limit 1, because neither of those events really incentivize you to buy selection packs, right? NR, of course, you know, everything's cheap, so you don't have to spend gems to be able to participate. Uh, and then with Limit 1, you know, it doesn't really, again, doesn't really promote the pack, because you're going to have to use such a high... Uh, you know, diverse card pool anyway, that uh, buying into the selection pack won't necessarily help you out there. So, um, yeah, I don't know, that's just, that's kind of my spiel about uh, this event and really events in Master Duel in general. Um, I just don't think they're interesting. I really just don't think they are. Uh, I, 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 I really wish that we could have another event that would challenge us to deck build, and I also really wish they weren't just like blatantly here to sell whatever the latest pack is, right? Um, but... That's just where we're at. I don't know. Uh, it's interesting. I, I've tried to come up with some ideas for, for fun festivals, um, but it's not something I've devoted too much time to. So, uh, honestly, if, if y'all have any ideas in the comments, I, I, I or if y'all have any ideas in general, rather, I'd love to see them in the comments. Because, um, again, I really liked NR. I really liked Limit 1. I think a good Master Duel Festival will challenge you to deck build something completely out of the ordinary that you otherwise wouldn't normally. Um, which again, is not at all what we have right here in front of us. Uh, yeah, I don't know really what else I can say about like Pearly in this event. It's unhit, so it's good. Um, again, we're not on Max C because it's not legal, so 
Uh, we're like maxing out on nibs, and we have some drolls, and uh, it's like whatever, you know. It's like this is how you would build pearly if maxi wasn't legal in master duel. That's all it comes down to, really. Uh, oh, and also if you can play any link monsters, um, like there's not even really any interesting Xyz monsters that that you really throw in. It's just like uh, some more Zeus pilots, really. That's about it. Um, maybe an extra copy of some of the pearly Xyz if you weren't playing them already. So. Um, yeah, I don't know. I guess the one thing I can say is that now that I'm on three straight Pearly Street... Well, being on three straight Pearly Street and three per leap, for a second, I thought was going to be a bit too much, but um, I think it actually ended up being completely fine. We still have a lot of disruption here. Like, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Uh, 14 hand traps, which is still a fair amount. If I wanted to play even more, though, I could see going down to just one copy of Pearl Leap and playing, like, another Valor and something else, maybe a couple of triple tacks, uh, maybe, like, Valor Crossout or, you know, two triple tacks instead of two of the Pearl Leaps, but, um, I don't know. I just decided to throw in a playset just to, just to be able to open more Pearly cards more often, just to be able to excavate the Pearly off the Pearly more often. Opening this card is pretty good. Um, being able to, because, like, the line to go into x Noir with ep Noir uses the Pearl Leap anyway. So even if you don't need that and you're doing, like, you know, let's say you got lucky and got the Delicious and you go for a Plump, for example, it's still not bad to set the Pearl Leap, especially because that also allows multiple draws off the CP memories. So, um... Yeah, per leap. I don't think you need three. Uh, I decided to try it out and was not uh, was not um, disappointed by the results. But I could also see going down to one copy and just playing more hand traps or disruption cards as well. But that's pretty much all I have to say um, about the build here. Yeah, it's, it's per leap. <laughs> so um, yeah, let's just break it down card by card, and we'll start getting into these games. Uh, so we're on two effect failure, three draw mockbird, two pearly. 3 Per Lily, 3 Ash Blossom and Joy Spring, 3 Nibir the Primal Being, 3 Stray Pearly Street, 3 My Friend Pearly, 2 Called by the Grave, 3 Pearly Happy Memory, 3 Pearly Pretty Memory, 1 Pearly Delicious Memory, 3 Pearly Sleepy Memory, 3 Infinite Permanence, and then 3 Per Leap. Uh, and that's going to be it for the main deck. For the extra deck, we're on 1 Slacker Magician, 1 Sylvan Princess Sprite, 1 Kiki Nagashi Fugo, 1 uh, Leerlisk Ensemble Robin, 2 Epperly Happiness, 2 Epperly Beauty, 2 Epperly Plump, 1 Epperly Noir, 1 Downer Magician, 2 Epperly Noir, and then 1 Divine Arsenal Aw, Zeus Sky Thunder. Uh, that's going to be it for our list. Let's see these games. Okay, our first opponent's playing, like, Branded Tier Limit, which seems to be one of the more popular picks from the Fusion side. Uh, and then from the Synchro side, I've been seeing mostly either Sword Soul or Blackwing, which makes sense because they're both very readily available uh, structure decks. We're going to be taking the second turn here. Opening pretty well, I might say. Uh, opponent's going to lead with the Rhino Heart. I decided to just Ash Blossom here. Uh, if I'm holding Ash against Tier... I like using it against the Rhino. You can use it against the Kickalos, but if you use it against the Rhino, it's got a greater chance of just ending their turn, right? If you wait and stop the Kickalos search, they could potentially still use the Sack to summon and then mill five, right? So. Okay, so we're using the Fusion Armament here, or not Armament, uh, Deployment, rather, for Cartesia. Fusing Dragon while using another Cartesia in hand, as well as a Sardinier in hand. So uh, they get to send the Garura as well to draw a card. I'm gonna Droll here. I don't think they're going to add any more, but just in case they do, right? I'm just going to, you know, why not? Uh, Lubellion's coming out here. That'll get to place the uh, Branded Beast from the deck. That is, of course, not adding, so Joel does not stop that. It places it directly from the deck into the Spell Trap Zone. So, top deck Imperm, but it's like, I don't really need it against this board here. Uh, I'm just going to go with the Delicious Memory, summon out my Pearl Lily, uh, and then add my friend to Pearly. My friend Pearly, I'm going to use that to try to find something here, mainly just to try to bait the Branded Beast, which we did manage to do here. I did not want my Pearly to get hit with the uh, Branded Beast, so. I'm just gonna go ahead and activate Pearly. We'll target that Delicious Memory. And this is gonna be a board state where I'm not even necessarily gonna try to go for like a huge X Pearly Noir. I'm gonna go for a big Zeus instead, right? Um, that does make Pearly pretty good going second in general, right? Is that um, of course, going first, you try to set up the big towers, but even if you have to go second, um, as with any Xyz deck, you have uh, this wonderful card in the extra deck called Zeus that makes going second a lot easier. So, you just have to get one battle in and then you can wipe the board, which is exactly what I'm going to do here. 
Uh, not setting or activating either of the pearly cards in my hand. I definitely want to keep the board clear of everything but Zeus until my next turn here. So, all right, fusion deployment coming down. I imagine for Albaz, but the nice thing about this is that we can just chain Zeus to Albaz's effect, and that will actually stop Albaz. The same is also true of Cartesia. Um, I was planning on doing the same thing if my opponent summoned Cartesia and then activated the effect. Because um, Albaz needs to use itself on the field as fusion material. So if you chain the Zeus there, the Albaz goes to the graveyard, it doesn't resolve because it's no longer on the field to be used as fusion material. Similarly, uh, Cartesia doesn't need to use herself as material, but fuses from the hand or field. So if you chain Zeus to Cartesia's effect, uh, then they either whiff on the fusion because they are not able to have the materials anymore, or they're forced to resolve the effect fusing stuff from their hand that they might not want to fuse, necessarily. Um, and the other thing, too, is to remember to wait, if with Cartesia in particular, wait for Cartesia to activate its effect, then chain Zeus, because Cartesia's effect is a quick effect, so if you activate Zeus first, they can potentially chain Cartesia to that, um, and then you would have to waste another Zeus activation if you didn't want the fusion to go through, so... Um, just some, some minor stuff to keep in mind when you're playing uh, any deck, really any situation where you have Zeus versus Branded. Uh, it's good to keep those things in mind for sure. But uh, let's go ahead and see the next game here. All right, this one's going to be Blackwing on some interesting stuff, including a playset of Chicken Game. It's funny because Blackwing is like kind of a budget event deck, but I, the, the Chicken Wings are definitely... Or chicken Wings. <laughs> chicken Games, rather, are definitely not uh, particularly budget there. Did I say Chicken Wing the first time, too? I really hope I didn't. Um, anyway, here's Chicken Game. They're, of course, going to pay a thousand to draw a card uh, before using another Chicken Game. I thought I ran into, like, some kind of FTK deck at first here, and then I saw Blackwing Vada. Uh, I'm going to use Valor on that here, uh, but they are going to end up having the Called by the Grave, so uh, the Vada will end up resolving. Yeah, maybe this person's, like, an Endemian player. They just didn't have another deck, so they just, like, <laughs> got the Blackwing Structure deck or something. I don't know, but... Uh, setting Zephyrus and Shinook for the Black Winged Dragon. Uh, Ball Drake's gonna come down here, and that's gonna be it from our opponent. So we do threaten the Ball Drake effect potentially, but uh, I'm gonna lead with the Pearly Field spell here. I'm then gonna pay a thousand off my opponent's Chicken Game to try to draw a card here. I really just want to see if I can get another Quick Play spell because um, I was afraid of the Pretty Mirror getting negated, which does end up getting negated by the Ash Blossom here. So gonna have to set the Impermanent Pass back. Excuse me, back over to our opponent. Not ideal, but it is what it is. Uh, they get to draw another card. They're going to Zephyrus bounce the chicken game to summon it back, and then, yep, pay another thousand, draw another card. Uh, also, definitely worth noting that, of course, while this card's on the field, player with the lowest life points takes no damage, so we do have to answer it at some point. Uh, so, as they summon Borea Storm, my opponent is playing closer and closer into my Nibiru here, or one of my Nibirus. I think maxing out on Nib is definitely fine for this event, especially for the Synchro decks. Um, we'll definitely proc your Nib. So if you're on Xyz or Fusion, I think playing Nib is definitely the way to go. Uh, if, if you're playing a Synchro deck, Nib is a little harder to use against the Fusion and Xyz decks, so... Alright, we did top deck another Quick Play spell, thankfully, so here's the Pearly Happy Memory. Uh, going to actually be Pearly Effect, only get hit with an Infinite Impermanence, which is, uh, of course, definitely not ideal. We do, however, still get to find the My Friend Pearly because we have Straight Pearly Street on the field. Um, and the Pearly was summoned from our deck. So, yeah, even though the Imperm was activated, or rather because it could be activated, Nibiru was the only target. That is something you have to pay attention to, uh, especially when you're playing against this deck, but also just in general. Watch for untargetable effects. Um, and in this case, my opponent probably thought, oh, Imperm, yep, I can just flip that up here because it's glowing yellow. But alas, again, Nibiru was their only target. Um, it's also why uh, one of the many reasons why Straight Pearly Street is so good. Um, especially if you're on regular ranked ladder in this meta, Valor and Imperm uh, and Ghost Mourner, I think that targets. Uh, actually, don't think it does. I don't remember off the top of my head, but anyway, mostly Valor and Imperm, right, are everywhere for Snake Guys. So you got to make sure that you're having that straight Pearly Street up so that way your stuff isn't affected by that. Um, but of course, Snake Guy isn't really a thing in this event because Link Monsters aren't a thing. But um, yeah, we have a couple more games to watch, of course, so let's see those. All right, here we find ourselves playing against the Sword Soul deck. Um, yeah, again, I don't know. It's like I was saying earlier. 
it, it's just so... I'm just sick of Master Duel events being, like... And I'm, I'm not even somebody who has an issue playing with meta decks, right? Uh, ooh, look at this, going second in all gas hand. Uh, I'm not even somebody who has an issue playing with meta decks. Obviously, I've been grinding Snake Eye nonstop in the Challenger Cup, right? Um, but, I don't know. Like, at the same time, I do like, you know, having something a little bit different every now and then. Uh, being able to take a bit of a refresher. Like, I enjoy playing Edison in my free time every now and then. Um, and when I dabbled in, in our format for, for a tournament, it was, it was cool just to explore, uh, decks and lines and strategies that I wasn't familiar with. Um, even if I was figuring out my NR deck as I was playing it, um, no, it was still, it was still a lot of fun. Um, oh my god. So the second my friend Pearly here, it doesn't, it looks bad, but it's actually the most insane draw I could have gotten. Because that means I can activate the first one, they're definitely gonna banish it with Qi Xing Long Yan, and I can just play the second one. <laughs> um, yeah, for a hand that doesn't have any hand traps, this is a, this is a little bit of a custom hand we got going on here. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it's, I don't know. I might like playing meta decks, but even even I am like, see, I guess my whole thing is like, you know, if we're gonna have a separate format, let's actually have it be like significantly different, right? Like, it, 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 if I just wanted to play more pearly, I could take pearly to rank ladder, right? Um, and same with like, you know, or like any of these decks, right? Sword Soul, Branded Tier, uh, these are all decks that are already seeing play on rank ladder, so it's like, it just feels kind of pointless to bring them to an event too, as if that's like. As if that's a new experience or something. Um, this is not. But anyway. Uh, Pearly is unfortunately not the best kitty in the world here. Not finding anything off the top, but that's fine. Uh, we'll just go ahead and use her effect to copy the delicious, or attach the delicious, rather, in hand. Oh, um, so I misplayed a little bit here, because my original plan was to go for a Zeus, so I should have overlaid the Slacker Magician. However, um, we were able to still find another way out of this. Basically, I'm going to attach the Pretty Memory, use the Pretty Memory effect to attach their Chi Xing Long Gun, and that'll actually... Oh, they didn't show the stats here. But basically... Um, because of the delicious memory effect, by attaching everything that I did, my ex Pearly Noir actually ended up at exactly 2,900 attack, exactly enough to battle over the Chi Shao, and with six materials, was also similarly uh, unaffected by my opponent's activated card effects. So uh, that ended up being a nice way to cinch out that duel there uh, and get the W. Uh, again, I wish it would have actually, the replay would have shown the stats on my ex Pearly Noir, but looks like it went by a little bit too quickly for that. Um, yeah, we have one more duel to watch, so let's let's see that one here. All right, last opponent's gonna be yet another branded tier deck. It's like I said, if you're playing against the fusion, they're either on branded tier limit or branded tier, and then the synchro players are almost exclusively on Blackwing and uh, um, uh, Sword Soul. Although I have run into TG as well, and it's like I thought about playing pure TG, you know, for this event too. Um, but at the same time, I, I had the same thought of, like, I don't know, I could just play TG on Ranked Ladder. <laughs> uh, I don't know, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe I should have tried it. Maybe playing a new deck, a deck that was new to me would have made the event a little more refreshing. But it wouldn't have solved the overall issues with the events, which is, of course, that, uh, you know. Oh, we're gonna draw here for sure. I don't think they're gonna add any more, but again, I don't know. Oh, that's right, they did some kind of weird stuff here. They're actually playing the Visus. Um, so for a second, it's funny because there was a second where I was like, oh my god, is this, is this Monodium? Did I just wreck them by drooling here? Because then they can't go into Lightheart, but then I remember like, oh yeah, they can't go into Lightheart anyway. But, um, we do have to watch this Mudora in the graveyard, especially if we're going to use Per Lily's effect to try to use a quick play spell in the graveyard as material. But, not, not too threatening of a turn one from our opponent here. Also, we went second all these games, didn't we? I didn't even realize that until just now, but, oh, that's right. <laughs> Yeah, I should have picked a different game, but I don't, no, 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 I remember why I picked this duel, honestly, because it kind of, to me, embodies the, uh, the attitude of not only this event, but events in general, and I'll admit, like, in events, not, not just because there's less stakes in general, like, no rank loss, but, um... Even, even me, who's like normally the advocate of like, you gotta always play the game out, you gotta always play it out just to see if you can win. I don't know, in an event, I just have no desire to play. I think that's what it comes down to for me, right? Um, even beyond just like, does this event challenge me to deck build? 
my main metric for if an event is good is like, okay, when I think about doing this event, do I groan and be like, ugh, I guess I'll do it for gems? Or am I like, oh, I can't wait to, to, to play in this event and try this out? Um, and it's been a long time since I've felt the latter. I'll say it. It's been a long time. Um, for me, for this event, for the last I, year's worth of events, they've all been, they've all gotten the reaction of me of like, ugh, well, I need the gem, so I'll, I'll play it. <laughs> you know, it's like, like half the time I don't even make content for whatever event is out, just because I don't think it's interesting. And, um, I don't know, I was going to do the same for this month, actually, I was just not going to make a video on this event, but I, I don't know, I found myself thinking, like, we just, we need better events, and I wanted to express that as well. So, uh, that's going to be it for this video, uh, let's move now to our outro. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching all the way to the end of the video, that means a lot to me. Uh, it's also a great way to support the channel, so thank you very much for it in that way as well. Uh, if you're interested in supporting the channel in other ways, uh, like the very special patrons that I am thanking here, uh, you can do so by checking out some of the links in the description, one of those goes to the Patreon, uh, where you can join these fine folk and support the channel that way. I do post daily content over on Patreon, so uh, you do get something for support there and if you're interested I also have a coaching tier option uh, as well details again will be on patreon in the link below uh, also in the description linked below is my twitch page where I stream uh, a few times a week you can go ahead and check that out follow or subscribe over there uh, if you ever want to catch me live uh, you'll also find my second YouTube channel if you feel like subscribing over there to watch some of the twitch vods as well as some additional uh, non yu gi oh related content that I make over there. Uh, again, any of those links you want to check out is all a great way uh, of supporting. But again, even if you don't do that, just watching was also a fantastic way to support. And once again, I have to thank you so very much. But uh, in any case, this is Hexlex. I'm going to be signing out and I'm hoping you have a fantastic day.